the Chamonix 8x10 Alpinus X convertible camera. Arguably one of the most exquisite and beautifully crafted field cameras on the market today. It is a wonderful mix of old world functionality with modern styling and features. Show off. <laughs> I purchased my copy of this camera back on June 15th of 2023 at full price and with my own money. That really hurt my wallet badly. Ouch. I am still feeling the effects of that. So it is important to note that this video is not sponsored by Chamonix. All of the viewpoints I express in this video are my own thoughts based upon my own experiences. I was just interested in purchasing as light of a weight 8x10 view camera as I could find that was well built and that I wouldn't have to contend with any mechanical problems. Everything should work as intended so the camera can get out of the way of the process of making images. That was my expectation. Since then, I have extensively used the camera in the field and in the studio. I am happy to report that this camera has exceeded my initial expectations and is worth every dollar I paid. So please allow me to show you around this extraordinary piece of artistic and functional mastery. The camera is made of carbon fiber, anodized aluminum, and stable wood either American black cherry or teak. I believe that my copy is made of teak, but I am not a lumber expert. All of the anodized aluminum is finished in black and in my humble opinion, coordinates well with the other components of the camera. Because of the materials used, my copy of this camera weighs in at about 6.9 pounds. Wow, that is light for an 8x10. For reference, my 8x10 Zone 6 Studios view camera weighs in at a hefty 14 pounds. That's a significant savings and makes hiking that much more comfortable. The folded flat shaped dimensions of the camera make a perfect square at about 12 and a quarter inches, not including the protruding rear standard knobs, which adds about two inches to one side. The folded thickness is about three and three quarters of an inch. In comparison, you can see that the Alpina sits in the middle of the Intrepid and Zone 6 Studios view cameras size wise. The bottom of the camera includes two threaded sizes for attaching a base plate to. One thread is for a standard quarter inch screw and the other accommodates a 3 8 inch screw. It includes these four protective rubber feet for when you set the camera on a tabletop without the base plate attached to avoid damage. These two knobs tighten the location of the rear swing knobs along this slotted groove. I'll talk more about the other side of these knobs and their function later on in this video. The last point of interest is the branding plate that displays the serial number along with a curious line graph that is reminiscent of an electrocardiograph. Perhaps this indicates the excitement that you'll experience by using the camera, or maybe that the price of the camera will induce tachycardia. <laughs> Either way, be sure to consult your physician to determine if your heart is strong enough to handle the Chamonix. <laughs> to unfold the camera, begin by loosening the two rear standard knobs and raise the standard to its upright position. One of the aspects I love about the rear standard is that it automatically unfolds to a 90 degree position because of these clever little locks. It takes the guesswork out of bringing the camera to that position or having to fiddle with the standard so that it catches the detents that are often employed by many other view cameras. If you want to go beyond 90 degrees, then you simply slide this catch to the rear of the camera to get a maximum of 30 degrees for rear tilt. To set up the front standard, you loosen the larger inner knobs and lift the standard up and slide the support towards you to the maximum extended position. Then rotate the frame for the lens holder and front standard support in opposite directions until they are upright on the same plane. It is important to note that if you don't maximally extend the front standard support, then the two track guides that allow for front rise and fall will not engage properly into the groove that keeps this mechanism in place and functioning properly. I initially made this mistake and erroneously thought that I had a defective camera. Secure the front standard to the base of the camera by threading the swing slash shift screw into one of the four dedicated holes. I used the thread closest to the rear standard for my 150 millimeter lens the second thread from the front is great for my 300 millimeter lens 
and the front most thread for my 450 millimeter lens. The thread positioning helps minimize the amount that the focusing bed has to be racked, which can save time when performing that function. One of the helpful features of this camera are the 68 detent indicators that make it easy to line all the moving parts equally. Yes, I did count all those little white dots individually, in case you were wondering. The maximum amount that the bellows can extend within the limitations of this camera is about 26 inches, and the minimum is about 2.4 inches. That's a very generous range and easily accommodates all of my lenses with plenty of movements. Chamonix also sells an extension board that attaches to the very first threaded hole on the base of the camera that enables the camera to extend out to an impressive 36 inches with the standard bellows. If you're wondering why anyone would need more bellows extension, the reasons are for longer focal length lenses like the Nikon 1200mm lens or for macro photography. The bellows seem to be made of a textured synthetic material, perhaps vinyl, I'm not certain. Interestingly, the bellows seem to be made of only one layer of material unlike a traditional view camera which typically has a sandwich of three layers. The front standard lens opening is designed to accept the CNR type lens boards, which are 5.5 by 5.5 inches in size. The lens board is attached by slipping the bottom edge into this lip made of carbon fiber, and the top edge is locked into place by these intelligently designed rotating slides. Since my large format kit includes lenses mounted in Linhoff type lens boards, I also purchased the Linhoff 2 CNR lens board adapter. This lens board adapter continues the camera design with a black felt lined light trap and secures the lens board in an identical fashion. At the top of the standard is a bubble level for checking level on a horizontal plane. There is also a snap fastener that is used to secure the bellows and prevent sagging when moderate focal lengths are used. In lieu of the snap fastener, you could also place a support under the bellows, like your 1996 fanny pack from Yellowstone National Park. Functional and stylish, right? <laughs> I still need to convince my wife of that one. There is about three and a half inches of rise and about three inches of fall. There is an equal amount of left and right front shift of about two inches with a very generous amount of swing that is limited only by the bellows. In my opinion, the most exciting part about the front standard are the independently controlled mechanisms that allow for the lens tilt and rise and fall. The large inner knobs control rise and fall, while the outer, smaller knobs are used to adjust and lock the amount of lens tilt. It is so nice to be able to use a ridiculously huge and heavy lens like the Nikon Nikkor 150mm SW lens without it crashing onto the base of the camera. The mechanism is very strong and supportive, but yet allows for smooth and precise lens movements. But wait, there's more! Chamonix has also built in a spring-loaded ball-bearing detent mechanism to make it fast and easy to bring the lens tilt back to the zero position. This same mechanism also allows for a default forward lens tilt of 10 degrees without having to lock the front standard frame in place. It's an absolutely smooth and refined mechanism that allows for lens tilt up to 30 degrees in either direction. For me, the Alpinus leaves no front standard movement to be desired. There is more than plenty of latitude for the kind of work I produce with this camera. The rear standard gets even more intricate and interesting. As I mentioned earlier, the rear standard automatically defaults to the 90 degree position because of the sliding locks. Just above these mechanisms are bubble levels to help adjust the positioning of the rear standard on a horizontal plane. This might be a good time to mention that all the bubble levels on this camera are shipped with a covering over them. Chamonix explains this on the FAQ section of their website. Apparently, the combination of a wooden camera and bubble levels makes for questionable shipping. Even funnier is the fact that I didn't even notice that the bubble levels were covered until weeks later when I started wondering what all those oval shaped black pieces were used for. Duh! <laughs> As I mentioned earlier, the rear standard is capable of a maximum of 30 degrees for rear tilt. For forward tilt, the rear standard is limited only by the bellows. 
One of the interesting aspects of this camera is how rear swing is applied. Two knobs located on the base of the camera can be loosened and positioned anywhere along the dedicated slots to provide a maximum rear swing of about 30 degrees in either direction. The other interesting aspect is that this mechanism can also be used to focus the camera and or extend the bellows just a little bit more. Brilliant and beautiful design. On a side note, Hugo from Chamonix recommends that the two rear swing knobs be positioned in the middle of the slot when not being engaged for optimal strength. In my humble opinion, the star of the rear standard is the intelligently designed film back. For starters, it has a bail lever which makes inserting and removing film holders so much easier than trying to use your fingers as pry bars. That is a wonderful luxury item to have on any large format camera. You may be happy to hear that I've been able to use my Lisco Regal, Lisco Regal 2, Fidelity Deluxe, and Fidelity Elite film holders without any issues. Although it would be nice to lighten my load a little bit and pick up a few Chamonix holders. The coolest part of this film back is the mechanism that allows a photographer to change from a vertical to horizontal position and vice versa. To disengage the lock and magnet system, you simply slide the film back in the direction of the top of the camera and then pull towards you. I recommend using the bail lever as a point of contact to ensure the film back doesn't go flying out of your hands. The magnet used in this back is pretty strong and the release can catch you off guard. To reinstall the film back, you begin with an offset of about an eighth of an inch from the bottom to allow the back to slide into the receiving dado on the rear standard. Once the film back is seated in the dado, you'll feel the power of the magnet pulling it towards the bottom of the rear standard. This allows the four screws at the top and bottom of the rear standard frame to lock into the tiny slots located on the film back. This makes for an incredibly secure connection without the use of any slides or external locks. Absolutely brilliant. My only caution is that you do need to make sure that the film back seats properly into the dado or the back could potentially fall off of the camera or allow light contamination. There are also two bubble levels for adjusting the camera in the horizontal and vertical positions. Another nice feature is the included carbon fiber ground glass protector that uses keyhole slots to hold it in place and has four felt pads to minimize the contact with the carbon fiber of the film back as well as the edge of the ground glass. I'm still on the fence about the finger hole that exposes the ground glass and whether or not that's a potential source of breakage. The ground glass is not notably different than any other that I've used in terms of its brightness. On all of the cameras I've used in the past, the ground glass has always contributed to my love-frustration relationship with large format. If you want to hear more about that, check out my video on why I shoot large format. I'll leave a link to that video in the description. What I appreciate about this ground glass is the spacing of the grid lines as well as the square and circle that serve as indicators of the center. Additionally, there are two dash lines to indicate a 4x10 area on the ground glass. This is perfect for helping me compose an image when I want to record a high resolution pano, but still want the option of a full 8x10 piece of film. One of the luxuries I've never had on a ground glass are these clipped corners, which are useful to check if the image circle is being blocked by any extreme movements. A nice finishing touch is the Chamonix branding. The last piece to discuss is the focusing bed. To rack the focus outwards, you unlock the focus using this focus lever and turn the knob counterclockwise. The knob is comfortable to the touch, the action is smooth, and there is plenty of room for my thick fingers. Did I mention how awesome it is to have a focus lock? In my opinion, all view cameras should have a way of locking down your movements so that you can't inadvertently bump them out of position. The Chamonix does that and everything else exceptionally well. In Ben Horn's review of this camera, he noted that the bellows sometimes comes into contact with the focus knob as the camera is being folded into the closed position. I would speculate that the air being displaced from the bellows in combination with gravity seems to drive the bellows downwards towards the focus knob, causing it to catch. 
To mitigate this issue, he uses a piece of foam between these areas to avoid any potential long-term damage. I've noticed that my copy of the camera tends to do this on occasion as well, so I've also added a piece of foam to my kit. The other areas of concern to mention are the two rear swing knobs. They come into direct contact with the bellows when the camera is in the folded position. I am not comfortable with this for obvious reasons, but I do note that when the camera is closed properly, there is essentially no movement that would increase the likelihood of friction between these areas. Chamonix did make an effort to soften the edges of the knobs as well as using cap nuts, which hopefully won't cause damage in the future. Closing the camera can be a little finicky. What I like to do is unscrew the front standard from the base of the camera, followed by loosening the rise and fall knobs. Then I pull the lens frame and support in opposite directions, followed by lowering them to the base of the camera. The lens support bracket needs to be slid all the way towards the back of the camera until the attaching screw rests fully on the cutout located at the front of the focusing bed. While holding a lens support bracket in place, I then lower the rear standard until the lip of the carbon fiber latch secures the front standard into place. Then I just tighten the rear standard knobs to make sure that my camera sandwich doesn't come apart. In conclusion, this camera is exquisitely well built and designed. I am so happy that I decided to purchase this camera and make it my workhorse for all of my landscape and studio work. I honestly couldn't ask for anything more out of this camera. It works the way a view camera should work and doesn't get in the way of making images. Well done Chamonix, well done. Are you thinking about purchasing this camera or currently own it? Please share with all of us why this camera is right for you. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so. As always, thanks for watching.